very good afternoon everyone. Today I will talk to you about corporate workplaces and their superconscious. The myth that education leads to employment has been demarked. According to the United Nations Development Program report, in rural India, 67% of the girls who are graduates are not employed. And urban India, that number is 68%. Further, the employment bureau numbers show that women who are working has actually gone down over the years from 36% in 2005 6 to 24% in 2015 16. Of course, this results in a gross lack of representation, negotiation power, women perspective at work, and of course, a loss of dignity. There are many fancy names for this. You call it the glass ceiling for women who cannot make it to the top. You call it the leaking pipe for women who drop out at the early stages. And you call it the broken drum for those who are struggling in the middle. But tell me something. If workplaces are equal opportunity, how do we even explain this happens? Well, it could be, you know, just saying. It could be that uh, we women, you are perhaps not smart enough. Let's see what studies say. In June 2019, Harvard Business Review came up with a report, carried out a study across thousands of men and women on the 360 of 19 leadership factors. The results women outscored men. In 17 out of 19 factors. The study goes on to mention that in spite of these results, women form only 4.9% of Fortune 500. Now, a disclaimer at this point. I'm not trying to propose a war between working moms and stay at home moms. For heaven said, all the moms work. And in fact, it is a shame that working at home does both unpaid, undocumented, and doesn't add to the team. Emotional labor is real too. At the same time, not every woman should have to get married or to have a child. And you see, this is also not about men versus women. And the fact matter, patriarchy is not equal to men, and feminism is not equal to women. We are born in this system together. We are both victims as well as perpetrators of the same evil. <coughs> and think of it. In a world where women are free to grow careers and children together, even men will have the free choice to exercise their life choices outside their own gender stereotypes. So clearly this is not a war, and even if it is, we must get everyone on the same side of the table. And looking at these numbers, Looking around us, we have to admit that equality doesn't quite work for us. We need equity. If equality means giving everyone the same thing, equity means giving everyone what they need. Equality assumes everyone has similar circumstances, so it is gender blind. Equity is more realistic, more sensitive, more impactful. And so, we must stop talking about gender equality. We must start to talk about gender equity. But how do we do that? Simple. Make rules, make policies. And to be fair, quite a lot of workplaces are already doing some of that. In fact, women have more opportunities than ever. Now, when the maternity leaves are longer, most companies are offering maternity leaves. We are talking period leaves, we are talking domestic abuse leaves. Porsche awareness is higher. And for all we know, hashtag MeToo has taken us by the storm. Each of these are difficult. Each of these are important. And yet, there are nuances in our day to day regular activities at the workplaces that are sadly outside the scope of policies. I think of the time I had my child. My workplace did have an activity with policy. I was already working there for several years. You know, calculations you need to do before you go the family. A senior boss in my company told me 
It is like a parasite to try to instruct matter to the beams of the form. In those days, my work pressure was such that I was staying up most of the nights trying to finish my work before I could go out. I remember this one appointment with my daddy, where she swiped across all the prescription and all the medicine coils, looked me in the eye and said, Shintiti, do you even realize this? Your baby is going inside your body. Her heart, her brain, her lungs. This stress is semi fatal. A few weeks later, I had to be hospitalized directly from work due to threatening this My story is not in the and you will see that it is in marked of the problem. At the cost of stereotype, I am also tempted to share. Recently, at a friend's gathering, I met one of my male classmates from my class of people of the three days. So he recently had a baby. He was sharing with me how he found the three weeks long maternity leave ridiculously long. So he went from the hospital. So you see the career gap that takes birth along the way. And also the maternity policy benefits stop at childhood. Whereas your parenting really starts there. And by any measure across the globe, across most of the households, the duty, the responsibility, the involvement of a mother is many, many, many times more than that of a father. As a mother, out of the two parents, you will be the one who would have to excuse herself in between work to make call at home, to ask if the baby has called when the baby falls sick, she looks for you. And when the nanny resigns, God bless you. But you cannot say this at work. The, you know, the topics of nannies and child care, these are considered unconditional. So essentially at work, you have to pretend like you don't have a baby. And at home, you have to pretend like you don't have a job. You burn like a candle, burn like a candle. The particular gap goes with the the leaking pipe, the broken drums, the last things. And to be fair, if seasons are all, about all points love, then the society, the parenting space in the society is also all girls love. As a mother, you have always asked, why is the child too thin or too fat? Why isn't she crawling as if she is not talking as if? And in part, you could be told, take the child aside and leave her, while the real way moves and discuss current life. They say it takes a village to raise a child. And unfortunately, in today's time, with us walking away from our hometowns, with us living in small nuclear families, we are not have to become that entire Fun fact World Health Organization recently updated their ICD 11 handbook to list burnout as one of the clinical conditions. No surprises here. Working mom stopped. But then you are offered advice. You are told to raise your hands, put your foot down, lift your chin. You are told to sit at the table. You are told to stand up for yourself to be. As if you are broken, as if you need to be fixed. Victim very much. And then you are given examples of super women. Women who have had more career success and more children than you want. If she can point at you, can be something friends? Have you ever seen a man being asked? See, if Steve Jobs could do it, if Bill Gates could do it, if Mark Zuckerberg could can do it, do you come back at you? So, for gender equity, the workplaces start with and policies that only do that much. Policies that only do that much. For anything else. You don't have a country. You have to pay. We have to pay. Because as much as we are women, we are the society, we are the world, we are the workplaces. But how can you do that? Like, like becoming an activist, running an NGO, working at a grassroots level. Here is how. I walk the place before you go to a practical life. There's a few practical things. Through this, we can start with where we are and what we already At our homes, in our workplaces, in the markets, in the economics, in the industries. When you switch on the TV, talking about markets, you switch on the TV commercials, 
the pet toy, the puppy toy, a one first part, so that the husband's heart is taken care of. And the puppy toy, the wife must upgrade it when the husband gets a toy. The health field, the mother must buy the child. The mosquito repellency must switch off to keep the mosquitoes at home. But those of you who would go on to have a career in marketing, in media, in commerce, would you watch out for the social message you send to your products, to your publishers, to your billboards? For those of you who might go on to work in fashion design, could you as much do us a favor, put some pockets on the ladies' trousers? And we also need to carry our wallets and our phones, we also need our car keys and our house keys. You know what? You can even have a car or a house. When you go to a restaurant of this, food menu to the woman, drinks menu to the man. The feedback from to the woman, the check to the man. For those of you who would work in the hotel, hotel industry or in the hospitality business, for those of you who might want to meet in the hotel management, could you please watch out for gender sensitivity in the body? Could you call out on the sexism? Have you ever noticed how the car suits are always too tall for us to climb up? In the office space, in the office chairs, we women often have to lift our feet on the chair legs because they don't touch the ground. These spaces are ergonomically meant for the men. For those of you who could work in architecture, in interior design, could you watch out for this? Could you watch out for those pictures on the wall, the plain pictures of success with men with suits and suitcases and a smile on their face? Could you put women up there? Could you put women up there on the, on the top of page of the magazines, not just for the fashion magazines, but also for your business magazines? For those of you who would become journalists, could you put women on your newspaper headlines, but not just for the gender crimes or for the page space? but also in sports, also in business, also in career tactics. Could you interview both women and stop asking them when the time to get married or when they will have a child? Could you have given said report that Professor Esther Dutton of MIT is the youngest person ever and the only second woman to have won the Nobel in economics and not just Professor Dutton's wife? For those of you who have bought these million resources in the world, you must know that you can drive a large part of the destiny of people. Could you put a space for this mother? Could you walk in fact that mother who is out of maternal benefits? And if you could send her cars on childhood and let them back to the field. For all you know, she might have left her infant for the first time home to join back work. And she's excusing herself every two hours to go to the hospital to pump milk. Could you be kind? Could you screen the new mothers? Could you screen the women of your beds when you look to fill up your job vacancies? If you really need to give paternity breaks, could you please incentivize the fathers to stay on the bed and not come back to work? Studies show when it comes to hiring and promotion, women are judged from their past accomplishments and men on their future prospects. Studies show that for every one dollar that a man earns, as of 2019, a woman earns only 79 cents. And studies also show that when it comes to hiring and promotion, more than the job skills, what is more important is critical relationships, strategic relationships, office politics. And we women are often left very lonely out We don't have somebody to grant the table in favor of us behind those closed doors. Could you, as HR, screen those interview questions to keep aside gender bias? Could you watch out for the pay gap? Could you assign mentors and sponsors to your women? And could you incentivize those sponsors so that they have a clear stake in seeing the women bias? Could you put gender national targets at every level in your organization? You know, today, we live in an unprecedented time. Technology makes it possible for, for us to almost beat the hurdles of space and time. We can log in from anywhere, we can face time from anywhere. We could have invested to bring those technologies to the women's press. They say that the fourth wave of feminism is already here and it is rising on the internet. Could you bring these internet facilities to the women's press? Work from home, virtual environment, flexible hours, remote talking. And 
then as a manager, could you as much assure that you would penalize, you would compensate it against a page, against a promotion? As a manager, could you watch out for the culture in your team? Could you assure that that woman, she is not just a cake cutter and a party planner and a note taker in her uh, team meetings? Could you amplify her voice? Could you listen to her and could you fight for her? For those of you who could be working in learning and development, could you watch out for the default pronoun in your course? On the example simply for the text you have on the company's policy. Could you change it from leadership? Could you train your managers on unconscious bias on time scores? For those of you who would go on to become teachers and you have such a big responsibility and such a big power in your hand, could you talk about gender sensitivity right from your classroom to your question papers to your curriculum, all the way from the teacher learning to the business schools? Could you talk to them about raising their voice, about amplifying the other people's voice? about collaboration more than competition. Many of you, you might go on to become future leaders and I'm sure that happened many, many of you. Many of you may go on to start your own companies. Would you put the emotional culture of your company right up there of your priority alongside the profit targets? When you stand up on the diets like this and when you address uh, your audience in your company, would you tell your stories of struggle along with your stories of achievements? Because there might be, for all you know, one new mom right at the end, one vulnerable mom who needs that last one time word to get it had on the Would you put your ears in the club and listen to that mom? Would you have a gender sensitivity champion? Would you have a super compassion officer? Would you watch out for the emotional culture of the workplace? To have the women work for joy, not for judgment. And for us individuals, as a person, as bystanders, as family members, as parents, what can we do? Talk about gender sensitivity, bring it to your living spaces, bring it on your dining table. Tell your little boy about the importance of consent. Tell your little girl that she has the right to say no. Don't put them to sleep with fairy tales by damsels in this place where fortune stopping to come and save them. No, they can pretty well save themselves, they can save others. Give that boy a dog. Teach him how to dance well. Give a doctor's head to that dog because she needs some friends. Teach them both cricket and cooking. Teach them kindness. Back to my story. As a mother, I spent several years working in a 12, 13 year house, you know, talk, just talking about it. Coming back home, I I cleared my actuarial exams, dropping my infant on my stretched out legs, my boots got her back. For a long time, until I broke out. A few years back, I fell ill face down. Broken spine, major depressive disorder, fibromyalgia, high pressure. The doctor told me, You are totally burnt out. You are one step away from quadruple digital, you need several months of health rest. No work from home, no, no sabbatical policy at the workplace. So I have to do the unfeasible. I have to do it like that. On the last day I called, they gave me a form to fill out, the exit interview form. On it there was a question, reason for this. I filled it up with one word. Person. As I stand here today, I feel extremely ashamed of myself. I feel extremely ashamed of me on that day. This is that one word that has haunted me ever since that day. Personal. This is not personal at all. This is political, this is universal. And it is perhaps the biggest mistake I have made. This is perhaps the biggest mistake many of us have. To think that this is personal. We will be trying to make it look like it's a happy decision, a change of priority. To try to scope it under the past. This is not personal at all. When I reinvented my career as an author and a professional speaker, I tried to use all the opportunities I had to speak to speak to raise awareness on gender sensitivity. I'm writing my next book on women in workplaces and I hope that it does it work well. 
I feel that each of us, with whatever voice we have thrown or with whatever capacities, we need to start now. We need to start from that we are. <coughs> to mend that, to seal that leaking pipe, to mend that broken rug and to knock on that glass ceiling. Because if you don't who will? We the women, we the people, we want to grow families and children together, why not? We want to have our cake and eat it too, why not? You know, my parents who brought me up on that wheel of family heart. Tell me, our parents they meet well, when they grow us up women, ready for the workplace. But now, it falls on us. On me, on you, on each one of you in this room. It falls on us to grow up the workplace. To be ready for it. Over to you.